Uh, the first talk is from Professor Nathan Hill from Trinity College, Dublin. Um, his title is Relative Chronology of Some Bola Stock Changes. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I, I um, am honored to be giving this talk at, uh, at Beda. I was uh, there in uh, December of 2019, was given a very nice welcome, um, and I hope uh, I'll be able to uh, join you again in Beijing uh, sometime not too far in the future. The first thing I'm going to discuss is how I have done this work because I'm using a new tool uh, that uh, we call CAPER. So it stands for Computer Assisted Proto-Language Reconstruction. And it was initially uh, built by uh, Shun Gong uh, in 2020 when he was uh, working with me in London as part of an ERC uh, uh, project. Uh, and, and we were specifically looking at uh, the reconstruction of Proto-Burmish. Uh, so then he got this job in Vienna and uh, wasn't able to continue working on it and and one thing and another. Uh, so it left the software in a kind of um, uh, suspended animation. Yeah. So then in, uh, uh, I don't know why this isn't going forward. Okay. Then in 2022, um, there was actually a, a very uh, brilliant high school student uh, named Seth Knights who, who rewrote the code base for uh, the program. So now it's back up and running, yeah. Uh, so this is just to show you uh, on on um, there's the European Union's uh, kind of um, research repository called Zenodo. Uh, Shun Gong has uploaded his his video. He has I think it's a two hour video that explains uh, this thing or caper and what it does. Uh, and then also here is um, the code base that was written by Seth Knight, also on uh, Zenodo. And then uh, it's also on GitHub as a kind of active uh, place for development. And you know, I invite anyone who who wants to. You can uh, you can uh, you know use this software if you want, or uh, rewrite it, or what, whatever. Right? It's totally open. Uh, so um, so this is the the I'm going to give you a sort of demonstration, if you like, of of some things I discovered using this new uh, method of Shungong's. Excuse me. Okay, so first I'll just explain uh, how it how it works or how it's you know supposed to work because uh, I don't want it to be a little bit of a black box for you. So this is a, a diagram where you have uh, your various uh, daughter language lexicons that should be uh, machine readable, um, but they don't have to be. This is an important uh, point of, of of his system. They don't have to be like um, already perfectly aligned for semantics uh, and whatnot. Um, the, the, the idea is, you know, most uh, computer-based work in historical linguistics has worked with a very small word lists. And we don't want to do that. We want to be proper uh, historical linguists and use as large as possible of, uh, of uh, lexicons. Okay, so then it goes into this uh, thing, the reconstruction assistant, uh, and then, uh, the linguist interacts with it, sort of rerunning software, adjusting various things. And then at least in, in theory, it outputs an etymological dictionary. So now I'll explain a little bit how it works, where we have uh, some attested forms here in Achang, uh, in Bola, and in Maru. Maru is called uh, Langsu in, uh, uh, in Chinese. So in the rest of this presentation, I will call it Langsu. Uh, and we have uh, some hypotheses about sound changes that are formalized as finite state transducers. And then the software runs those uh, changes backwards on the attested forms to propose reconstructions. So you see here, if we run the software backwards on Achang P, we get these reconstructions as possible. So Be and Bie and Bi uh, and B and Be. Yeah. Whereas if we run them backwards on Maru, we get B, or I should say B and B and B. Uh, but if these three words are cognate, which we have hypothesized they are, the only reconstruction that will predict all of the attested forms is this one in the middle. So just to you know uh, restate that, we run all of the sound changes backwards on all of the attested forms. And then we take the intersection 
of the possible reconstructions. Uh, and those are then, you know, if you like, the proposed uh, reconstruction used by the software. And uh, one thing that I think is really brilliant about this system uh, is that the reconstructions are actually never stored anywhere. Uh, they're always created on the fly by applying uh, the sound changes to the attested forms. Okay, so now I'll just show you what it's like to use this system. Here are uh, this is the called called the cognate assignment boards, uh, and here are the various proto forms. Uh, and here we see under this proto form uh, different you know proposed uh, proto lexemes with the um, with the attested forms underneath them. And then uh, this is a, a a slide. I can't change anything, but uh, if I were really using the software. I would be able to assign, you know, move these around uh, dynamically uh, to 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 say, oh, actually, I think this proto form uh, belongs with this um, with this, uh, or or rather, this attested form belongs with this proto form. And uh, and and what, the thing that's sort of um, really nice about this is it it's it's brought all of the data that could be reconstructed to the same proto form together for me already. So in this way, it's it's very easy to find, like for instance, um, morphemes inside of compounds uh, that are part of the same inherited uh, 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 the, the same inherited uh, you know uh, lexeme, if you like. Okay, uh, and then here's the other uh, major interface, which we call the transducer editor and debugger. So this is where I write my sound changes here on the left, and then uh, uh, the Correspondence patterns are automatically calculated uh, based on um, on uh, on those sound changes. Yeah, so those sound changes applied to the cognate judgments you just saw, uh, and it, you can put. You can see here it says current is uh, finite state transducer is old, and then switch finite state transducer. So you can compare an old one and a new one. Uh, in order to, for instance, if I propose a change, I want to know, does it help or does it hurt? And actually, one thing that's very nice is um, if new uh, uh, correspondences become uh, uh, exceptionless, uh, then they turn green and you get a smiley face. Uh, whereas if my proposal makes uh, things that used to uh, work, if it makes them no longer work, then they turn red and you get a frowny face. So you get very active feedback from the machine about whether your proposed sound changes are good or not. But I'll, I'll just emphasize the linguist is making all of the cognate judgments and proposing all of the historical phonology. The computer is not actually doing any thinking. It's just keeping track of uh, the internal consistency of my own uh, work. So, uh, uh, so now I will just uh, move ahead. Okay. so. Now we want to, uh, you know, apply it actually uh, to BOLA. And um, the uh, I'll say that, let's say, subjectively speaking, I find that this system works uh, sort of almost too well. So you find sound changes, uh, you know, one after another after another, and just uh, writing them down and uh, keeping track of what you've discovered, what the examples are, what the exceptions are, uh, it becomes uh, very hard. Yeah, it, it becomes very burdensome. So, so actually the, the, the sort of discovery phase, it has become so fast uh, that then writing up the findings uh, becomes um, what's, uh, you know, annoying. So I'm just going to look at a few interacting sound changes. None of them are particularly glamorous, uh, but uh, just to sort of show that, uh, I don't know, that this approach works also to, you know, to propose some sound changes in the history of BOLA, um, but then with an emphasis on uh, Fleeting, uh, sorry, feeding and bleeding relationships in relative chronology. Okay, so two notational conventions, and these come directly out of the system. We have this symbol that uh, is like does not turn into, yeah? So this is just something you'll see in the data that I give, uh, and then a dagger in front of uh, what looks like an attested form. So this means that without the sound change that I'm currently exploring, there is no way to generate the, uh, the actually attested uh, BOLA form. Uh, so in this case, this word uh, is, you know, no, sorry, I should have said, ciao. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so that form cannot be generated from any proto-Burmish reconstruction is what, is what this um, 
way of writing it, uh, it tells you. Uh, but instead, uh, that the form marked with the dagger is what we would have expected by applying all of the sound changes other than the one on under discussion. Uh, so, for instance, in this case, this Burmese form and this uh, Langsu form, uh, which mean dry, point to this Proto-Burmish form, and this Proto-Burmish form would turn into this Bola form occur according to our current sound change proposals, uh, but that is in fact not the real form, which is why it's marked with the dagger. Okay, so the other uh, symbol going the other way with the knot through it uh, is like this. Now, what does that mean? That means without the sound change in question, one could still arrive at the attested form, um, but that but that the proto form that you would need to get this attested form is not the one you need to get the cognates in other languages. Uh, so in this case, for instance, uh, we have this in Burmese and we have this in Longsu and we have this in, in, in uh, Bola and they all go back to just Q, but uh, without the particular sound change that I'm investigating right now, uh, the, the Bola form would have to go back instead to, to this different proto vowel. Okay, so, so I think these two conventions are very helpful in terms of increased explicitness. So we find out exactly what a particular proposal is contributing to the overall system. Um, so, yeah, so both notation systems show what, what it is concretely that goes wrong if we don't include a particular sound change. Okay, so now I just go on to uh, some sound changes. So here is some kind of... Um, uh, vowel fronting or uh, rounding uh, after uh, medial glide. So in general, inherited u becomes ao in bola, but it remains u after an inherited ya. So I think that rather than a sound change like u changes to ao except after ya, which is a little bit finicky, uh, instead we should assume that the ya changed the quality of the vowel from u to u, and then this new vowel was not targeted by uh, the, the, the change u to ao. So, that, so uh, if you buy that explanation, we need this change. Uh, and without this change, uh, the relevant words in bola would have to reconstruct to this other vowel u rather than to u. But we know that that's not what happened because of the final k in langsu. So I'll just show you now the evidence. Uh, and then I've put the word bola in bold just because these charts of evidence, uh, you know, have a lot of stuff on them so that your eye will be brought uh, immediately to the to the bola form. Yeah, so uh, you see here that Langsu has a K, final K. So we know that the protoform must be U, uh, uh, but uh, the bola has not changed to Ao, which usually U does. Uh, so that's why I proposed this change. Yeah, am I doing okay with time? Um, okay, so next is this change that I've already referred to, u to ao. So this has to come after the change that we just proposed because the change we just proposed uh, bleeds this change. Uh, and here's evidence. It's, it's, there's lots of evidence. You know, cry, for instance, at the bottom, a good uh, Tibetan burn word. Uh, it's not mu in, uh, in, uh, in bola, but rather is uh now okay and then uh we you know we've already uh, so we we've created this u vowel in order to uh get the right performance uh, from our u to ao change so now we have to get rid of this uh uh, uh u uh this u uh and change back to u uh and and we, you know, we have to do that, or these again, these uh, uh, attested bola forms uh, could not be cognate with these uh, Langsu forms. Okay, and now a very small change is this: that auk, the final k, uh, becomes a glottal stop. It's hardly worth mentioning, uh, and probably quite late. In any case, it has to happen after that u to ao change, right? Because, uh, uh, yeah because the K, the final K, was part of the conditioning environment. 
Okay. And then uh, we have this uh, this change. I'm never quite sure. Uh, you know, I'm 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 a historical linguist, so I'm not so great at reading IPA. Um, so in 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 the following cognates, the important factor is that the long suit does not point to final u because remember long suit changes u to uk. It's a very famous uh, change in in long suit first uh, discussed by Robbins Berlin in the fifties. Uh, so in these cases, uh, long suit doesn't have uk; it has au, so it must go back to a different vowel in the uh, in the proto language. Uh, so uh, so I propose that that vowel also becomes u. Now this is a different vowel, so actually this this change is sort of independent in chronology from the uh, preceding ones, mostly except that it, it, you, it, this can only happen after. Uh, the u has uh, done all its stuff, including uh, changing into uh, into ow, yeah, because otherwise this this would have fed uh, those changes. Uh, and uh, the following examples uh, could have uh, been fed by the change of u to u, uh, which is why a reconstruction is possible for Bola without this proposal. So, so here's where the, the notation that the system is pointing to, you see, is quite nice. Here it's saying, uh, you know, I can't get to the attested Bola form. Instead, the attested Bola form should have been this, unless we, unless we include this sound change. Whereas here it's saying, oh, I could get this, uh, I could get this attested uh, Bola form, but uh, it would have to come from a different protoform than the protoform that the other languages are pointing to. So uh, I think that kind of uh, subtle distinction uh, is, is nice uh, output of using the Kper uh, uh, program. So, 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 so we need this sound change in order to get these attested forms. We don't need the sound change in order to get these attested forms, but we do need the sound change in order for these attested forms to be cognate uh, with, uh, for instance, with the old Burmese and the uh, long suit forms that you see on the screen uh, in front of you. Okay, and then um, lastly, you know the 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 advantage of all uh, you know precise work in uh, uh, in the historical phonology is that we can identify loan words, right? So um, because the outcome in Langsu here is irregular, showing u rather than ao, and if you like, showing u rather than uk, uh, which are the outcomes in Langsu of either proto u or proto you know o uh, that means that in fact there's no way for uh, us to get these words yeah uh, and then you see they're actually extremely close uh, between the different languages uh, so uh, I, I think the fact that uh, none of our historical phonology can get us these forms and the uh, forms uh, just uh, phonetically uh, synchronically are extremely close uh, across the languages, uh, suggests that they're loan words. Now, I don't necessarily know what, uh, you know, language they're from. Uh, is it Langsu borrowed it from Bolo or Bo Bola borrowed it from Langsu, or maybe both borrowed it from some other uh, language? And I would point out, uh, just from my knowledge of Burmese, which is not very good, that uh, Pu means happy in Burmese, and Mu means uh, matter or affair in Burmese. Uh, so uh, my guess is that these are loan words uh, uh, from Burmese into both of these languages. So uh, yeah, so that's sort of the, you know, I, so so let's say just to sum up what uh, what we've done, I've introduced uh, this uh, software package designed by Gong Shun and then rewritten by uh, Seth Knights uh, and shown you how I've been using it to explore uh, the, the history of uh, Bola and uh, uh, in particular, uh, relative chronology of sound changes in Bola, these feeding and ble bleeding relationships. And, and uh, you know, this is only one small part of uh, uh, Bola historical phonology that, I'm, that I've been able to explore uh, using this method. Uh, but I think this shows some nice interactions between uh, sound changes, mostly to do with the vowel U and, uh, and similar phenomena. And um, once we've worked out the relative chronology, uh, then we have used it also to identify uh, some loan words, uh, probably from Burmese into these languages uh, that can be now separated out and not considered uh, cognate anymore. And uh, that's uh, that's my whole uh, presentation. Yeah.
uh yeah so let me just say like if you're getting started in the first place yeah uh mm. what it needs is it needs uh some uh lexical lists that are in ipa uh where the semantics have been aligned somehow yeah like uh so for example uh you know uh, in the uh, stet project in berkeley they already digitized the sun hong kai uh you know the big sun hong kai book uh, and the big huang bufan book yeah so uh, the easiest thing to do because those are already in ipa already semantically aligned is you can just use any 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 data in there is already sort of ready to go if you like yeah uh, if you want to use data that's not in there then you need to prepare it yourself uh, and what that means is it needs to be in ipa and somehow the semantics need to be aligned now the way we would recommend to do that uh, is uh, there's a thing uh, that the max Planck institute has called um Oh, the Concepticon, it's called, yeah. Uh, and uh, this uh, is a is a is a kind of standardized way of referencing uh, semantics, and they provide some software tools uh, that uh, help you to do that also automatically. Um, uh, and those software tools also include uh, uh, Chinese. So, so basically, if you start from a list that is just like let's say. Uh, two columns, one is IPA and one is the meaning in Chinese. Then you could uh, run some Python script over the meaning in Chinese. It would assign it to uh, a reference in the Concepticon. Uh, then you would have to check that. Uh, and if once you had done that, it's ready to put in our system. So yeah, so now you said, do you have to have any sound change proposals in the beginning? Uh, no is the answer, but you do have to have cognate judgments, right? Okay. Uh, which is, uh, so if you're starting, let's say you, these are two languages no one has ever worked on, just we pretend. Uh, how do you get that initial, those initial cognate judgments? There's also a piece of software uh, that Matis List has made, uh, which is called uh, LingPy, yeah? And it will do that for you. Uh, and it basically, it's a kind of, a, you know, it, it looks at uh, phonetic similarity and the, and sort of some things we are used to, like ka can correspond with cha and uh, things like that. So it, it's a kind of like, you know, it, it's very rough. It, it only gets about 80% right, I would say. Mm. Uh, but it's very helpful to save you the time from having to do the very obvious things, yeah. So if you were really starting from the beginning, you would have those, uh, you know, uh, that a spreadsheet for each language. Uh, you would you would align those semantics, and then you would run LingPy over it all, and then you would put that into Caper. Now, mm -hmm. if you like to work on the Burmish languages, uh, we have already digitized uh, everything we can get our hands on. Uh, which, <laughs> which in particular means uh, most of the works uh, by uh, Dai Qingsha. So he he and his people he works with have published little short grammars, long grammars on, you know, I don't know, five or six different uh, uh, Burmish uh, languages, and then each one has a vocabulary at the back. So some one thousand words, some four thousand words. We've digitized all of that already. It's up on Zenodo. You can download it. Yeah. So basically, if you if you treat it like a computer game, you have two screens, yeah, which are this one and this one. So you can start in either one. Now, if you have that data and those cognate judgments, you don't have to have any sound change proposals, and you will still get uh, this because this is showing you the patterns, and those patterns exist whether or not. You have made any proposals, right? It's a, it's just a fact that, uh, you know, that uh, that. Uh, so in this case, Long Su K corresponds to Bola K in in these examples. That's just a fact, right? So it will display that for you. And now, 
you know, you 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 might, for instance, uh, propose because you know about uh, uh, work in the liter in the literature. You might propose that G becomes K initially in both of these languages. So then I write that proposal over here. I, I have to write it as a finite state transducer, which takes a tiny bit of care, but actually the way the syntax of finite state transducers ex is extremely close to how we already write uh, sound changes in the kind of, uh, uh, in, in, in the kind of, uh, what's it called? Sound, sound patterns of English, you know, notational model that uh, we all learn anyhow. Uh, so you, you write the sound changes there, uh, and then you press this button that says calculate. Uh, and then, you know, it will, you see, so let me just, uh, I don't know if you can kind of, oops, if you can just look really close at the, at the screen. What you have here is the attested form, and then you have two reconstructed forms. And the two reconstructed forms are from the old, the first one is from the old finite state, state transducer, and the second one is from the new finite state transducer. So in this case, they're the same because we're not working on this question, yeah? Uh, but uh, if there were, um, if let's say the old one were somehow bad and didn't predict this form, there would be an X here. Uh, and then if uh, our new proposal, our new, our new, our new uh, sound change, uh, fixes it, then you would get the check, and then it would also turn up green. Yeah, so uh, here is you know where you you write your sound changes, and then you run your uh, sound your 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 transducers over them to 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 get more and more checks and fewer and fewer X's is the idea. But actually, it's um you know it's not quite as easy as that because you almost always when you propose a sound change it gives you some things right, uh, but it also breaks some things that had been working, uh, and especially you know the more refined uh, your sound changes get, the more easy it is to break everything. So you have to be on your toes. Um, so so let's say I work on the transducers a while. So now I have better historical phonology. So this is uh, the moment where I can find new cognates, right? Because think of it this way. Think of like German uh, town, which means fence, and English town. If you're just thinking in the abstract, uh, using very strict semantics, you would never come up with this, yeah? But once you figured out the historical phonology, it becomes obvious. So this is uh, where uh, the process uh, that uh, Shungon calls refishing happens where we take our new sound change proposals and then we go and we grab the whole lexicon that we have and we reconstruct all of the protoforms of all of the lexical items. And that's when we get back to here. So let's say this was German uh, sound and this was English town or something. It would find that they have the same reconstruction and then it would put them next to each other on this board. And then that's where the computer is really being helpful because it says, well, now sound has the same protoform as town. Do you want to put them together? But it doesn't put them together. It would have them in different columns. And then I decide, okay, yeah, you know, sound, town, you know, maybe a town is a thing with a fence around it. So I can propose it, yeah. Uh, but, you know, maybe one of the words means chalk and one of the words means cheese, then I might say, oh, it's a coincidence. So I won't combine them, yeah. And that's the way that it uh, that the computer is being uh, helpful. Is, is It's really like, I improve the historical phonology, then it looks for cognates, and then I get to decide whether I like those cognates or not. And then I have more data, and then maybe I can improve my historical phonology more. And then once I improve my historical phonology for more, it looks for more cognates. And, and that's the sort of, uh, uh, what's say, virtuous circle uh, 